What's up guys, Dick Sloth here, and today we're doing the long requested tier list for worlds. Now there are a few disclaimers that I have to do before we get into this. First of all, this, what you're seeing right now, is not the final list. This is the old list, this is the one that I made with Weekend pre-Super Regionals, I think it was, or pre-Dreamhack. So this is from a while ago, and I want to basically go from there and talk about what has changed, how characters have changed, how they've performed across like competitive as well as maybe a little bit of ranked, and uh, also what other changes came into the game after the last competitive matches that could have an impact on the worlds. What's very, very important for this particular tier list is that I will say that I cannot guarantee that it's going to be accurate in terms of what we will be seeing at Worlds. And that goes for pretty much any tier list, aside of those made by the pros that are playing at Worlds and they're not going to give you a tier list at the moment for obvious reasons. There have been very different strategies applied in scrims to anything that we've seen as of late. Like, completely different things. I unfortunately cannot talk about that here, but really... A lot of what we'll be seeing in terms of the meta, in terms of what we know, is not what we'll be seeing at Worlds from what I understand so far. And those are changes I cannot factor in. Those are changes I don't know enough about. Yeah, well, that should kind of, I kind of cover that. So what I will talk about are the changes that we know of, the things that are kind of more on the obvious side, the things that we can kind of figure out from the changes, from ranked and from, from competitive previous to that. But there may be things that impact certain characters way more than what I could account for here. And that's just something you'll have to accept. I'll try my best to make it as accurate as I can based on my knowledge. And with that, let's begin. But before we jump into the characters, I have a quick list of notes to go over in terms of what XG actually has changed in various regards. And what we're going to do first is we're going to do a, the talk about the most important changes in patches since the last one. The last one we talked about, the last tier list was on 4.12. So for every patch after that, I'm going to give you a very brief summary of the most important, most crucial changes that will have an impact on this tier list. Let's begin with 4.13. Hasten Fatalis was removed. Hits various characters in various ways. We got other items introduced in return. Massive relic changes came in that patch, or that change in general was, the patch in general was very huge, there were a ton of changes, and they uh, affected many, many, many characters, but the relics pretty much affected anyone. For example, Teleport is pretty much almost out of soul lane now, I barely see anyone building it. Uh, Shell is used way more, or Thorns is used way more, so a lot of impact in that regard. Our Kwang got buffed quite drastically, he also got buffed again later, so there's an impact there. Kuzumbo got various buffs, he also got buffs again later that made him a lot stronger in the meta, and Raijin got massive buffs. If you see back here, he was in, in D tier, far from that now. And then in 4.14, we had the nerf to Bracer, kicked that kind of out of the meta, and Kernunos was nerfed, who was previously an S tier hunter. Then in 4.15, Devos was buffed, and Executioner was buffed, which basically completely overhauled the hunter meta, and therefore the meta in general. And Stone of Gaia was also changed to its new effect. Originally, people thought this was a nerf. Later on, it turned out to actually be more of a buff. Then in 4.18, and Sila was buffed, something that's very crucial for certain Bruiser tank builds. We had Kamazot's nerfs, taking him away from, from the top. Uh, further Kuzumbo buffs, and the massive Terra nerf, taking away her root in return for a slow. So that's going to take her down quite a chunk as well. And we also then in 4.21 had Agni buffs and Daji buffs, especially the Daji buffs are important here, Agni buffs, a little bit. Uh, we had Janos changes that may impact him in some way as well. And we had massive Ulur buffs. Then in 4.22, we had buffs to Fenrir. In 4.23, we had a Hydra's Lament buff, which buffs certain assassins. And we had Fafnir's attack speed buff being nerfed. Question is how much of an impact that we really have. And in 4.24, Bakos got a buff to his mana consumption, a quite big one, and Odin got a nerf. So this is just the most crucial ones. Then from ranked, what we know, based on Smite GG stats, uh, in terms of Diamond, latest patch, something that I don't want to go too deep into because I think ranked is not really that important for competitive, but some things can be noted here. The highest win rates at the moment are on Hell. Uh, that's something we might see at Worlds if she's not banned out and counterpicked. Uh, Chang'e, but she's barely played, so I wouldn't really factor that in much. Ao Kuang, surprisingly spiking in win rate at the moment, and his performance generally going up. And that's not just a few odd picks out, he's actually picked quite a lot, or banned quite a lot. Ulur, obvious here, no surprise there. And Kamazatsu is actually coming back a little bit as well. And then we in the Climbers, we also have Bakos, once again being mentioned, now that his mana consumption is not insane anymore. 
And with that, let's go into the actual list. We'll do this alphabetically and we'll also include uh, the, the win percentages basically that we have from the fall split, the performance there. So we have a bit of a better picture painted by that. And then basically forward from that. Actually, maybe we shouldn't uh, go into, into the, uh, the fall split as a whole, sorry. We should actually look at super regionals specifically here. And then uh, after that, look at the guards that we haven't really moved. That probably makes a little more sense. So the first guard that we've seen in uh, quite a few more games is Amusen Cup. Amusen Cup has been has been on the rise uh, ever since, basically, and uh, that's kind of what, what's been happening to him. So from the B B tier, where he's been forever, basically, we can take him a long way up. So the thing with AMC is countering him now is is kind of hard. He's just a lot more dominant in, in lane in the current meta where you just have a 1v1 scenario quite often. And obviously there might be strategies applied against that. He still doesn't have the best escapes. He has better vision, high mobility through the hives now, but not really mobility tools that other guards have with a leap or something. So I will just put him in a S minus here. I think he's he's a very strong guard, but I would say there are better hunters at the moment. And we'll talk about those in a bit. Then we have Amaterasu. Amaterasu... Uh, yeah, basically not played at all, got one win. I think Amaterasu is an interesting character, but I don't know how well she works in the current meta. I think it's there's some things that are favorable for her in a competitive environment where she can kind of, you know, utilize her full potential. But still, I think there's so many uh, warriors that just have more at the moment. So I'm definitely not putting her up here anymore. I'll say I think she's a solid A for now. And then we have Anher. Anher is, well, somewhere in the middle, I would say, is actually quite reasonable. I don't think much has changed for him. His win rate wasn't that high, but he wasn't played much either. I don't think he's a bad hunter by any stretch. So, yeah, A, maybe A-, minus, kind of between there, but nothing of the ordinary. Aokwang, on the other hand, goes way, way, way up from where he was here. I would say we put him as minus. I know that a lot of pros think, you know, the Ban Ao thing is overrated, he's not that crazy. But I do think that at the moment Ao Kuang is really performing, really doing well. And he still has that, that LAN presence where a team can, you know, kind of give him a bit of setup that, you know, prevents certain things that would happen in ranked otherwise with CC immunity can just be used more effectively against him. And I think that will definitely have an impact for Ao Kuang. He might not be played that much after all, but I think he's still a strong character either way. And then we have Aphrodite. Aphrodite, I think she's a little better than she was here. Was she even played? Yes, she was played twice and she got a 0% win rate. I don't want to give her C at the moment. I think there's a bit more of a reason to play Afro in, in like the current matchups and everything, but not much. I'll, I'll just say B, so just a little, little bit up, but not really anything drastically impactful for her. And then we have a newcomer, and that's Ardio. Ardio wasn't in the list back then. Ardio, I think, will be one of the more contested picks. I think she's still really, really strong. She's not quite as crazy as before, but I think we can give her confident S minus, at least. If not S, this is a bit, you know, up to you. I think she's a bit overrated and ranked, where she's like on the highest ban rate at the moment. I think she's still very strong, and in a triple guardian comp, she can also work really well. But especially in support, I do think there are some better choices. But S minus for sure, if not S. And then we have Athena. Athena, yeah, she's there. She's doing stuff when she's present. She has 60% win rate across five games. Nothing too crazy. It's just a global presence that you want to work against. And again, you can also pick in jungle and she can do well in a, in a triple tank comp, but I don't think we'll see too much of that. A minus is maybe a bit too heavy on her. I'll say she's an all around solid pig right now. And then we have Bacchus. Now Bacchus, I think, is, is definitely better off with the buffs, with the mana cost reduction. At the same time, Bacchus is just not the true support, kind of, as, as they say. I think A is okay. I wouldn't uh, disagree with like an A, A plus as well. I think he's not suddenly super crazy, but the mana cost definitely helps his, his early game, especially, uh, and the way he can he can level his protections up. So it's definitely beneficial. Bakasura. Bakasura's in C. That's not justifiable anymore. 
Vakasura has been performing, like, or has not been performing much, but he's been performing in the one game he was there, and he could have been present in maybe a little more games if uh, he was picked more to counter multiple tank comps. That's literally what he's designed for. And with certain item changes, like, uh, for example, I think as much as he benefits more from attack speed from Hayes and Fatalis, Hayes and Katana still helps him with a little more balanced stats overall, uh, kind of making this early game in some ways a little easier, even though, like I said, for many it may not feel like that. So I would say A- minus is, is very much justifiable here, um, until further notice, basically. I think he's still not a crazy good pick, I think there's still a lot of ways to counter him, but I wouldn't be completely surprised if we see him maybe even multiple times. And that brings us to Bologna. Bologna, I think, is really good at the moment. I think she's kind of been like underrated for a bit, and then like she kind of came back. She back then she was still like super highly rated. I wouldn't rate her as highly anymore right now. But I don't think we need to put Bologna down much from where she's there. She's a bit more of a ranked pick than a competitive pick, maybe. I would say maybe we put her around A+. Plus. I think that's where she can reasonably be placed in terms of performance, in terms of what she can do alone, in terms of how she can go on the back line, but other warriors have a little more setup potential or a little more bully potential against her sometimes, and that puts her down a little bit. Kabrakin. Kabrakin actually quite present, <laughs> surprisingly rather, but has been picked a lot, has a very average win rate, I think Gabracken is a solid A for now. I think he's not a B tier, A minus tier for sure. Uh, he could actually go higher up. He could actually be A plus. Uh, tempted to put him there, but I will leave it at A for now. Camelzots. Camelzots is not an A minus guy anymore. Camelzots, all things considered, I probably put him along with Gabracken. I think the situation we're in right now, he's just not a favorable pick. Certain item changes may benefit him, push him up a little bit again. Like I said, the win rate in ranks going up again, but also other junglers benefit more from the changes and other junglers should be priority most of the time. He has the benefit of being more bruiser capable at least, so that's gonna be A. Then we have Kronunos. Kronunos did have a 100% win rate, but also only one pick. So he's definitely not as favored anymore. Definitely not an S god anymore. I do think, again, that other Hunters are just better at the moment. I don't see as much of a reason to pick him. He's got the nice in-lane sustain and stuff like that, but he's also not going to be bad. So it's between A plus and A. Hard to say. Really hard to say. I I'm really struggling on this one. I think I'll put him in an A plus after a bit of thought. I'd say A plus. He's still a little bit better than some of the other hunters anyways. Then we have Chuck. Chuck with a 0% win rate and two picks. Well, Chuck, I think, is not absolutely terrible. I think Chuck's often, you know, it's the starter god, he's not good. I don't think he's that bad. I don't think Chuck's in a C anymore, but he's also not that good. Putting him next to some of the other gods here, I think Chuck is maybe an, an A-, minus. though his self-sustain is a little bit better now that Brawlers is uh, kind of not as popular anymore. Maybe he's an A. Maybe we can actually give him A. Somewhere between A and A minus, I give him A. Went out, put him up. And then we have Kronos. Now, Kronos had only one game, 100% win rate. The guy that we expect to play Kronos at Worlds is not going to Worlds. There's some other players that play him as well, though. I think... I'll put him down to A for now. I think he could easily be A plus again, but I think... Currently, Hunter items seem a little more favorable. Certain nerfs has hit him a fair bit still. And I do believe that he's still a very strong pick and he could easily be picked a lot. But at the moment, I feel like Hunter's just outshine a little bit. And then the next one is Kukulin. Kukulin has gotten 63% win rate out of 11 picks. He has also received very minor nerfs in comparison to other characters. Gladiator Shield nerfs obviously hit him, there were some nerfs there as well, but I do think he's a very strong character overall. I think that we can confidently put him at least an S-, minus, if not S. I'm kind of between the two, kind of not entirely sure where I want to put him here, but I still think that he's just got so much potential. He's just 
a little easier to shut down in competitive. I think we'll put him in S minus for now. And then we have Erlang Shen. Erlang Shen can pretty much go right with him, I would say. Erlang Shen is still such a high pressure guard. So, so much what he can do, like in terms of self sustain with, with his dog early in lane. So much he can do for the team with his multiple ways of setting up. More than Bologna, I believe, at the moment. Just more ways of CC. He's just not as good as bully at bullying a single target. Quite as good, but the setup makes up for it so easily, and I think that's definitely an S-. minus. Then we have Fafnir. Fafnir, actually, 61% win rate as well. It's 26 picks. One of the best supports. And I don't think much has changed about that. Sure, he's got a little bit of a nerf, but honestly, I think Fafnir is still so good. I will still leave him right here in S. He's getting a new friend, though. Friend is after the next one. The next one is Freya. Freya, one pick, 100% win rate. But, man, Freya. Freya is just such a snowball guard. And you have to get there. And her solo trading potential in lane at the moment isn't the best. Like, if you are alone all early game and you get bullied out as Freya, you get bullied out for so long, put her against an AMC and see what happens. She just suffers for a very long time until she has any chance of getting back. And the item's also not favoring her that much. No major buffs to them. So I think A- minus is actually where she kind of is again after some situations in between that kind of pushed her up way, way higher. Maybe A. Actually, we put her in A in the right hand. She can maybe perform a little bit better than Tay Bakasura, for example. Ganesh, only 35% win rate, but I think that's more down to who picked him than anything. I think Ganesh is still incredibly strong, has very good setup, very good support overall at the moment. Kind of tempted to drag him up to S, actually. Maybe leave him in S-. minus. Hmm. That's a tough one. He's definitely somewhere in the, in the higher field. I'll maybe say S- minus because in certain situations his kit is just not the best. He can still force out escapes though, which is really nice, but in certain comps other guards just work better. And then we have Gab. Gab, 60% win rate when he was picked. He's always the, the goal to support when others are banned. But I think especially on land where you can react super quickly with a shield and especially in the current meta where like extra shields and extra protections is so nice and that little bit of damage that he brings out is so nice and Blink is not an issue to be bought anymore. Like everything is in his favor. I think Gap is such a support, good support right now. I think he's completely underrated by many just because he doesn't have the damage numbers, whatever. Gap is really good. Gap is just really good, and I think S is actually very justifiable for him. Then we have Hachiman. Hachiman, actually very high performance overall, high win rate, high damage, high anything. Hachiman, Hachiman goes to S for me. This guy just has it all. Uh, what was that to say? Like In the beginning, everyone thought that the long-range shot was a gimmick, then everyone was like, wait, maybe it's more than just a gimmick. Maybe it's actually what, you know, makes him so strong. That long range damage before the fight has even started or after you're running away from him. It's brutal. And the rest of his kit isn't bad either. He's got a good escape, a quick escape, and then he's got a long range escape with CC immunity that can still punish you for chasing. And he's got an attack speed start as well. And he's got a very safe long range poke. Like, it's nothing that he doesn't have. Excuse me. This is gonna be a long talk, so I need to drink a little bit in between. And then we have Hell. Hell, once again, I think has a very interesting potential at the moment in certain comps when she is uh, allowed to do her job. Definitely out C tier. That's been a while. I will put her up to A+. She is very countered by certain guards, but when she's not countered, she's very, very strong. And that shouldn't be underrated. I think even something like Hell Solo could theoretically happen. Hercules, 41% win rate. Hercules is, at the moment, in my eyes, just budget Kukulin. He's got a self here where Kukulin has a shield and everything else Kukulin does kind of better, except for maybe long-range kills, but in return Kukulin has more setup and that kind of leaves Hercules in the spot where he's just there. He exists. Actually, I need to find where I put him in the last list. It's been a while. Herc, where are you? I am looking for your profile picture, but I can't seem to find it. Oh, he was an A+. Yeah, that's not where I put him. I put him in A, still a solid pick, not a terrible pick, but 
I just don't think the Metas favors him. He's kind of there with, with Chuck. And then we have Ho Yi. Ho Yi, 53% win rate. Got a little bit of a nerf to his extra damage on the Ricochet. Still a good guard. Not the best one anymore. A plus is actually quite fair. I would put him like below AMC, but above the uh, the standard hunter, so to speak, like Andrew Apollo, whatever. So that's that's pretty solid for him. Then we have Hunbats. Hunbats is a land god. Hydros got buffed. Jones got buffed. Do I need to say more? I'm not quite sure again where Hunbats was last. He was an A. He at least goes up to a plus. I. I'm going to take a bit of a ballsy approach here and actually say that he might be S- minus now. I think this guy has been... No, maybe not. Maybe I'm not ballsy enough. Looking at the guards here, maybe he's not. No, A+. Plus, A+. Plus. I think A+. Plus is, is a more solid choice where I think he can definitely perform better than the average guard. How well exactly, we will see. Because he doesn't do too well with uh, bruiser builds, for example. That's a downside for him, but... Then we have... Isis. Isis A+. Plus. Nah. More like A. So... Yeah. Balance, but not really anything. like Not much of a reason to pick her over anyone else at the moment, I feel, over the other mages. Not really somebody who shines as much. Then we have Izanami. Izanami, I think, didn't have a good performance as of late, but I think she's still very strong. Very high pressure. And this solo dual lane meta basically is solo long lane meta favors her. Izanami, I think, for me, is slightly above average at the moment, but only slightly. Uh, kind of A plus range, I think, in certain matchups. She just does very well, and, and that shouldn't be underrated. And the lane pressure that she brings, the clear that she brings, is something, you know, allows for some invade sometimes. And with the changes to her ultimate and everything, I think A plus is, is pretty solid. Then there's Janus. Janus. Yeah, that's a complicated one. I will say A plus here as well. I think on land, especially, these ultimates will be more impactful. He's got these changes that actually make him quite scary. Could be S minus as well. I wouldn't say S, but A plus, S minus, that field's where I put him. We'll say A plus here. Then we have Jing Wei. Jing Wei, I think, is actually an interesting character uh, due to the fact that crit isn't really that favorable at the moment, but everything else is kind of working out for her, you know? Again, a hunter that when you leave them alone in the lane, they do very well because when she backs, she's right back in lane and the enemy isn't. So you can always build pressure that way. If the meta favored her more, she would do anything amazing. Kind of a counter pick situational. Tempted to pull that A+. Plus. You know, similar to Hell and Kern. I'm gonna do that. It's a risky, a riskier call than with the others. I think she could easily be A as well. But I think there's a shot at her performing higher than that. Uh, higher than A, that is. Kumbagana. Zero wins, no nothing. Got some buffs. Single target lockdown is good. Put him up a little bit. He's not terrible anymore. Also not crazy good. No that. Seven times picked, actually. 14 bands. 42% win rate. Najah's pretty good. Najah's pretty good in, in, in the current meta, in terms of items and everything as well. It kind of goes decently in his way. You can build a little bit more tanky than other assassins get away with as well. That works for him too. I think here around, because he has uh, built-in protection reduction, in case you're unaware, uh, I think here around A+, is actually very solid for him. I think that's where he can stay. Nemesis... Yeah, she didn't have the best win rate, but she didn't get the most picks as well. The problem with Nemesis is if there are too many tanks and she can't do what she's supposed to do, she's supposed to take out like that one front line that you want to take out. Her kit's been changed a little bit, she got a little more pressure on everything, so I think A plus is also something where I could leave her without feeling bad about it. Nike, if only anyone would pick her. Her ranked performance is insane, but... In competitive, we don't really see her build up the lane pressure. At the same time, I, th I still think she's got a super valuable passive. And I think that if you get to late game, she's so good still. Even though that after vulnerability rotation, she's kind of, you know, not doing as much. But just that big ultimate and the passive are, are so good. And I feel they're, they're a little bit undervalued at the moment. So I would say A is actually is good. Nox. 
Nox is actually quite good at the moment. I think Nox should be above A. I think Nox has a lot of pressure, a lot of team utility, and items favor as well. A plus with the honest. That's that's a very good place for it to be. Odin. Odin gets so many nerfs. I mean, Odin also has an 80% win rate, so it's maybe not surprising that he gets so many nerfs. But also, Odin mostly gets picked when he's countering someone, otherwise you won't see him too much. Hey. You know, he's a very good situational pick, but he's also not that good anymore, as compared to before. And he's situational. You know? He's, he's not like situational, like, when he's picked, he completely dominates everyone, but rather... When he's picked, he can be really good, but you won't always pick him. Could also be a minus. Then we have Osiris. I think Osiris is still very really go good. High pressure, everything. Ability based, helps, death toll. All that kind of stuff. But I wouldn't rank him over like Kukul and Erlang at the moment. I think he's kind of more around the S tier. So that I think is, is reasonable. Along with the other two here. And then we have Poseidon. Now Poseidon... I don't know if I even want to give him A at the moment. I feel like Poseidon, you know, yeah, Krakens are nice and everything, and, and if you get the setup, that's cool. If you don't, then you're going to get walked over all game. So you have to have a team that protects him. The interesting thing is that if you combine him with someone who can force the enemy to get beats, or Aegis for him, then you have a, an interesting thing at hand, and that's kind of, you know, what happens with Daji, who we get to later, I think. As such, maybe that's what will justify him in A, that certain combos just make him a lot more effective. Then we have Ra. Ra. He's good. Sometimes, you know. He's just banned a little bit, not really picked. It's too easy to pick out. Not the same heal as he used to have. I don't want to put him in A-, minus, even though I could. I think he's a solid A right now. And that's it. Regen. Hello down there. How about we take a trip from C to B to A minus to A to A plus? Maybe to S. Moment do we want to go to S? No, maybe we want to go to A plus. High pressure, very good. Still a little bit easier to like, you know, take out his ultimate if he's uh, in the wrong place. Good mobility. Some characters can decently interrupt that now. So overall, I think that that puts him in A+. Plus. Could also be S-. minus, But yeah. Ram. Hyper carry. Snipes at Lana easy. Easier. All that kind of stuff. But he's not quite that hyper carry right now. Not not an AFC level hyper carry. A+. Plus. Good clear. Yeah. It's decent. Red Tusker. Also didn't have the best performance. But he's also not bad. Definitely not bad. There he is. What do we do with you, Red? I think the nice thing is the protection shred. Certain builds that favor him at the moment that make him work better than others. And that's where he shines, right? You know. So, as such, might put him A+. Plus. Could also be S-. minus. Something in between there where he has a little bit more impact in quite a few situations, and that's that's his main deal. Depending on how you're building him, obviously, you know, secondary frontliner, and that's that's another benefit. Raven. Actually, a quite high win rate, 71% of the highest. So we may have to pull him up a little bit. Didn't really see any nerfs either. Though I do think that in many situations, other warriors are just better. It's just, his bully potential isn't as crazy in lane, because... Ability bullies for the most part don't work out, and Kukulan just has more abilities to bully than he does. I think he's still alright, but uh, I personally don't see him that much in terms of the, the comps that we'd be getting. But I could see in certain threats that there will be some viability to him as such. A plus. Scylla. Nah. Not getting A anymore. Lan got, yes. All that aside, but maybe the Doom Op change is something that could, like, maybe that could be something where you can argue that she should be A again. But I really think there's so many better mages at the moment that just have so much more impact 
and even do their stuff safer and just hoping for this old reset is kind of all they're doing with her and I don't think it's enough. So Cat, not the highest win rate, but one hell of a god. I think Saket's A+, plus, at least at the moment, especially with, with the fact that she can be built like more bruisery as well, that when it, like works with her kit with a with the ultimate true damage especially, but also with the rest of her kit and the effects that she has, so... A+, plus. A+, plus is, is solid. Scotty. <sighs> Scotty's hot. I think that, you know, the solo duo helps her, but she's also ability-based, which isn't really the best at the moment. Puts her kind of in between. I think A is fair. I think she's not quite on the same level as Ram right now. But I don't think she's garbage either. So, hey. Sobek. Sobek has actually been showing up a fair bit. It's been been better. Also, his only game he won in the, the Super Regionals. So, Sobek goes up. There's the Crocodile hiding. A. 2. A+. plus. I think he's a good support, as well as the good solo that you want to pick when certain other options aren't available. And that's what he does best. Sol. Hmm. We see much of Sol. 45% win rate, quite a few picks. Still that that mid-mage with ADC style playstyle, but definitely not in S minus anymore. Maybe down to. A. I don't think she's quite A plus material. I think she's just a solid, balanced character at the moment for the most part. Especially with Fatalis, not something that you build on her before, but as such, building into the ring now is like something that you can consider. But kind of, you know, do you need the haste effect? Do you want the attack speed? Or are you gonna go full mage? Whichever decision you're making, you're going to have a bit of a downside. You're going to have a bit of more of a downside than other magical ADCs. Especially more than ADCs in general. I think that's putting her an A. Then we have Susano. I think Susano is actually better now with the buffs that he receives as of late. I think he's, he's better now than he was for a long time. He's not as minus anymore. That's, that's a long, long time ago. Um, maybe... A. I think there's reason f to pick him. But he wouldn't be priority picked over certain others, especially high dust buff and stuff help as well. Silvanus. 53% win rate, overall very favored guard. Make this quick, up to A+. Uh, good support. Wouldn't want to pick him over, say, uh, Fafnir Ganesh most of the time, but can also happen. It's the mobility thing, you know. Also, you get Sobek directly countering him. So, yeah, he's good where he is there. Thanatos. Hard to say. I think it's an A for now. That just can be good in the right situation. Against not too many tanks, it can be good, but not everywhere, not always. So yeah. Morrigan. There she is. A plus. Morrigan doesn't have the best performance in, in casual at all, in, in ranked, e not either, but in competitive, she always shines. Like the, As of late, a 72% win rate. Again, Zeros isn't there to play her, but I'm sure others will pick her up. And I'm sure that's at least an S minus. And we have quite a few competent Morgan players up there that will show what she's capable of in a competitive environment. Thor, what we call the weaker rat at the moment, A. Not much to say. Thor, Thor stays around A, as before. Thoth didn't have the best run. Five picks. No wins. What'd you do, Birdman? I think Thoth is still good. I think his pressure is still there. It's all still there and everything. And he can do good plays. But... I would have Nox over him. I would have Raging over him. There's quite a few mages I would have over him, I think. A. I think it's a solid A right now. Tur. Who's Tur? Haven't seen him in a while. I I really don't think that Tyr is that good right now. I'm sorry, Tyr. I think I'd rather pick Chuck or Herc over Tyr most of the time. The only one I could have seen him picking is Variety. It's not making worlds. I'd be surprised if there's a dominant 
presence of two. Maybe one or two picks here and there, but I don't think anything about his position here changes. Ulur. Hmm. It's the one we're waiting for. Ulur is absolutely insane. He's performing well everywhere. Highest win rate, highest climbing in ranked. Everyone complaining about him. And Ulur is gonna fill a niche that we haven't filled in quite a while. Ulur is gonna make it all the way to S+. The moment I actually find him. This is the the biggest, the most complicated thing if you're not picking guys from the right, finding guys here, A minus. That does not mean that Ulrich is automatically picked and banned every game. I wouldn't be surprised if he's banned most of the games, but I think there are teams that have developed strategies against him to counter him regardless, comps that counter him, that just negate his damage. Anything like that, that will work against him. But I think that still implies that if there's so much tactics just kind of, you know, going around avoiding Uller or surviving against Uller, then Uller is a very, very strong character overall and S plus is just fair. S maybe, but I think S plus is justifiable here. It's just outshining everyone. Vamana. Vamen. Huh. Haven't seen much of him lately. Not been doing too hard. Other ability-based uh, warriors are better and abilities warriors in general aren't that good. And that's what I'll say. Contemplating to put him in A minus. But maybe he's kinda okay here with Jan Wukong. He's both not the craziest out there at the moment. Yeah. Put him in A. Vulcan. Vulcan's solid. Vulcan is a good match pick. You can you cannot really go wrong with Vulcan. Um, I think Vulcan is is good and has presence and can do things in the meta, especially because he can be so far back compared to other mages and still have that objective secure. I'll give him A+. I think actually he can... He's kind of towards the end of A+, kind of like behind Nox and Ragen, but I will give him A+. I think still nothing to do. Xing Tian. Xing Tian, I think, is one of the more underrated picks at the moment by many. I think Xing Tian is really just doing well in the meta, especially, you know, with like things like Stone of Gaia being good and somebody like, like Xing Tian who already has self-sustain, who already had chills and lane in the beginning anyway, so he's just like healing up, not dying. That's his job, you know, jump out of everything, throw everyone into a tower and, and don't die. Throw a Stone of Gaia in there and it, it's super easy and you can do that now. And that's all he needs. Also a decent support at this point, actually. Sure, he kind of wants Blink to be effective, but I do think that Xing Tian overall is, is a great pick, and there's not much of a reason not to pick him when he's available. Ymir, A. Good guard, not the best guard, done. Zeus, B. Yeah, and the right comp, you know, when he gets safety and everything, he can do a lot of damage, but I don't know. Maybe, no, actually A minus. There's some guards down here that I would not prefer over Zeus. Now, we obviously have some guards that we have left out. First of all, there's Discordia. Discordia, I think, is a very strong character, and in the right situation she can do a lot. She's very strong clear as well. You can't really build pressure against her lane because she clears almost instantly in very early levels. And I will say, after some consideration, after seeing her so far in LAN, I think she can be an S-minus guard when you pull off the right when you pull the right strings, so to speak. And now let's go for the guards that have not been mentioned here because they're not in the in the place basically. It went in super regionals for some reason. Oh, not listed here. And that's first of all Terra. Terra goes down a long way. Maybe to A. No, actually to A minus. I don't see why anyone would pick Terra without the root. The guy who plays her all the time and Mealsy doesn't play her anymore. That should tell you a lot by Terra. It's just a slow. It's just a weak slow. Ganesh can stay in S minus. I mean, Cup we talked about, Alcon we talked about, Adi we talked about, Kukulam we talked about, Erling Shen. Osiris, Morrigan, Xing Tian, Discordia, all fine. Hu Yi, A+, plus. yep. We have Kepri, I think A+, plus is still reasonable here. Could also even be moved up to S-, minus. that ultimate is just good, but other supports are a little bit better at the moment. Medusa, I will take down a notch, I will give her A, but not quite A+, plus. she's just, you know, with the items and everything. She got a little bit of a buff, but I think uh, she is a land god too, so we can see her that way, but she's just very, very in the middle, you know. Naja, can stay there, my nemesis can stay there, Bologna. Can stay. Kurnanos, 
hell on that and I'm pretty sure we put the rest there afterwards so those can all stay in that rank. Agni. Agni, like I said, got these buffs. Um, overall, I think Agni might actually be A+. plus now. He's got so many changes uh, that I think Agni, in, in a competitive environment where you get the setup and where you can do the setup for your team, that long-range bombs are just always helpful. I think like long-range mages that can do things outside of the area of where where the hunters are are roaming and doing things. All these guys, all these mages have like very long-range ultimates. Just, you know, perform very, very well at the moment. And then, I know we had Apollo, I didn't think we talked about, but you can stay in A. It's kind of, could also go down to A-, minus, but yeah, kind of, no, actually, yeah, let's put him in A-, minus. I don't think he's that good in comparison to like Medusa or Annette Mond. Ares, I put him down to A-, minus. I think Ares is a great pick, but Ares is super situational and with a support being roaming, it's kind of like a bit harder sometimes to get ahead, you know, when you stand in the middle lane with multiple people for a little extended period of time. It's kind of predictable when you're going to go in for your chains and it's more ways of like kind of stopping you from doing that. So A minus. Barkos, we've talked about. Bastet, meh. I, I don't see any potential for Bastet in the moment. I've... She's just there. But I wouldn't really see any reason to pick her other assassins. Cupid. Also down a little bit. Don't really see much. That G goes up, 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 up. I think that G is the best assassin by far at the moment uh, when it comes to pure damage output. Not the one, like the best bruiser assassin, not the best uh, utility assassin, but the ultimate that is just... In its current state, it's just so strong, it's so hard to prevent it. Even on land ping, I feel, if you get hit by the chain and they insta-pull, I don't know what you're supposed to do. <sighs> I want to put her in S. I really want to put an S. I think I'm going to put an S. If she ends up not being picked that much and ends up in an S minus, more like towards that area, I'm fine with that. It's kind of, you know, will will her strength, her, her raw strength, and will her ultimate setup make up for the fact that she doesn't perfectly fit in the current meta? Will that be possible? Because in ranked, she's a stomping god, but in uh, competitive, it's not necessarily the case. But I think... The chains are still so good and like either you burn beats from a lot of people or any other kind of cleanse or you just pull one in and they're dead or you just did a lot of damage with your chains so either option kind of works and i think as such as as can be justified and if she goes down she goes down hades not much room to pick him it's not the a minus kukul khan yep solid a pick god a tier god mercury also a solid a tier god I think recent changes have not drastically changed him overall, even though some have like kind of touched him, but I think this is still fine. Nike we had, Poseidon we had, Scotty we had, Subcon. That means that over the rest here we should have gone over. Let me quickly check. Kabraken, I think we've not talked about, but Kabraken in A is very reasonable. And the rest kinda came here later. So I'm okay with all of those in A. A minus Artemis, yep, stays there until somebody proves what she can do. A Willish got a little bit of a buff through Hydras, through Jones, through various changes. Can still be a good situational niche pick, I think, but overall, just not your priority pick at the moment. Fenrir is a little better. The buffs helped him. I am not sure if it's enough for A plus. We have Red there. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe Adapting will pull him out and. In consideration that adapting plays him very well when he plays him, and in consideration that, you know, on land the setup from the ultimate is just a lot better coordinated, we'll give him A+, plus. maybe it goes down to A. Habois, he's so fun, man, but I don't know if the meta can, like, change anything for him, so I think A- minus continues to be his place. Kali, yeah, A-, minus. Neath, yeah, A-, minus. Nuwa, maybe... Just maybe A. I think Meta Fair is a little more, but still not as much as all the, the, the other mages above her. I think vision at LAN is so important and everything's watered up differently than just spotting out the enemy in a crucial moment through the ultimate. It's, it's nice. So we give her A. Could easily be A minus as well. Shibalanka A minus, yep. Kumbakana A minus, we get that. Scylla, Zeus, I think the rest all came here after. Our poor stays in B. Not much of a reason for him to be anywhere else. Nubis stays in B. Chang'e goes up a little bit. I could see her being 
like potentially being picked. Who knows who's been grinding on ranked actually? So probably a pro with a hidden profile, if anything, but we'll see. Um Karan. It's not absolutely garbage. And I think as a mid card, he's got a bit of more bit more of a reason to be picked, possibly. A minus. Gwen, you got a little bit of a buff. Still not sure how he'd perform, but I'd also put him in A minus. A buff John Kui, a buff Aphrodite for sure. Those guys stay down here. Sorry about that. Arachne, I think, is a little better than we gave credit for here. So we put it up to B. And Kuzumbo goes up a fair bit. Kuzumbo. I'll put to A. Maybe it's a solo. Probably it's a solo. Maybe it's a jungler. Very likely it's a jungler. Maybe it's a support. Probably not a support. And Loki stays in C. You can stay there. That's not, you're not a land god. You're not doing anything on land. Nothing against a coordinated team. So, those are the results. No one left untouched. Everyone looked at. That's what I think is a reasonable base for what we'll see at LAN. Like I said, I think there are certain outlier picks that can shine in certain comps that can suddenly come to play. Link, look at, for example, like a Willish, look at Habwa, look at Ares, look at Tur, Bakasura, Changa, Guan Yu. Like, it, with a certain strategy, all of those could made, be made viable. I think those six guards are the ones we're very unlikely to see. If any of these guards, then it's probably Sean Kui, but I also doubt that one. And I am very certain that we will at some point see all these guards and probably these ones as well. They are all very, very dominant. And this is like the, the middle field playing ground where anything could happen. Hope that was conclusive. Hope that was interesting and insightful to the point that my voice is now dead and you've got enough information. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell. It really helps me out. Other than that, see you for the next one tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out. And this is where I would do my outro and I will do it live right now because, you know, my outro music is copyrighted and stuff and I gotta do something else. So I'm doing this. One one day this is this is what ends me. This is what I'll die from. Goodbye.